on a peaceful January Sunday in the small town of Enigma in South Georgia. The congregation of the New River Holiness Church gathered for their worship service. Older members talked, young couples managed their children, and boys played around the pews. No one had any idea that one of them would be dead by the end of the day. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. Enigma, Georgia wasn't much of a town. Two blinking stoplights and a general store that doubled as a gas station sort of town. It was so small that back in 1995, when this event took place, there were barely 600 people living in it. But for Dewey, this little church was his haven. Here, fellow brothers understood him. Here he could be himself, following his faith and showing his devotion to the Lord. His life wasn't exactly an exciting one. Dewey didn't marry in his youth, like many others did around there. He was a certified bachelor, living a rather boring life. But he had one thing he loved more than life itself, spending his Sundays with his mother, his brothers, and their families at the New River Holiness Church. From the outside, the church seemed like an ordinary building. The structure was minimalist, with no details that would hint that it's a church, other than a very small cross and a tucked away sign on which the name of the church was written. Inside, the church was an even simpler affair. Just a few wooden pews lined up, facing a raised platform where the pastor preached. Among the fervent worshipers was Dewey Bruce Hale, a 40-year-old man from Brookfield known for his deep faith and dedication to the church. That Sunday morning, he had brought with him a rattlesnake. He carefully placed it in a wooden box near the pulpit. Dewey believed deeply in the words from the book of Mark, chapter 16. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. The congregation, a mix of weathered faces and curious eyes, greeted Dewey and his family with a chorus of mornings and the occasional handshake. Soon after, everyone took their place and waited patiently for the sermon to start. The service began with a solemn warning from the pastor. We have serpents up here, he announced. No one was surprised. This wasn't the first time the pastor allowed serpents at the service. In fact, he encouraged his congregation to bring poisonous snakes in the name of the Lord. Other than snake handling, the pastor also practiced fire dancing and poison drinking but only on rare occasions. Among the snakes that slithered along the pews over the years, rattlesnakes were the most popular. What makes a rattlesnake unique is, well, its rattle. The snake uses it to warn potential aggressors to back off or to distract prey. The famous rattle noise comes from the sound created when hollow and bony donut-like segments in the rattle bang together. Mix this unusual sound with the music and the preaching of a holiness church, and you get the best showcase of danger. The atmosphere quickly shifted as the crowd grew louder. Guitars, drums, tambourines, and vigorous singing erupted through the room. The music filled the air with catchy, repetitive lyrics that inspired toe-tapping, hand-clapping, and foot-stomping. Congregants hopped and danced, fully immersed in the exciting energy of the service. They threw the snakes over their shoulders, raised them above their heads, dropped them down their shirt fronts, and let them coil around their arms. As the music and the fervor of the congregation reached a crescendo, Dewey felt moved by the Holy Spirit. The pastor stopped his preaching when he laid eyes on him. Brother Dewey, come. He approached the pulpit, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and excitement. The congregation watched in awe as he held the serpent high, his eyes closed in a moment of prayer and connection with God. A collective gasp rippled through the church pews as the snake coiled around Dewey's arm. In a sudden swift movement, the rattlesnake struck, sinking its fangs into Dewey's left hand. The congregation gasped in unison, but Dewey remained calm, believing in his faith and the protection it would offer. The pastor started a frantic prayer, urging everyone in the room to ask the Lord to protect Brother Dewey. After returning the snake to its box, Dewey continued to pray, ignoring the pain that was starting to cloud his judgment. 
As the service continued, Dewey's condition began to deteriorate. Fellow congregants helped him to a seat, surrounding him with prayers and hems while the snake rattled angrily inside the box. The poison was spreading rapidly through the 40-year-old man's body. However, despite the swelling and the intense pain, Dewey refused medical treatment, steadfast in his belief that God would take care of him. He waited patiently until the sermon was over to take the rattlesnake back home. But with every second that passed, he felt more sick. At home, the scene was somber. Dewey lay on his bed, surrounded by fellow believers who held his hands and sang hymns of praise. The hours passed slowly while the venom took its toll on his weakened body. His breathing became labored and his strength diminished, but his spirit remained strong. The skin on his hand was turning darker and darker. Ointments and ice could no longer alleviate his pain. As the hours passed by, more and more fellow worshipers came to sit by his side and pray with him. During all this time, no one called the ambulance. Dewey, as others often do, refused any sort of medical treatment, invoking the biblical passage his faith was based on. He truly believed that the Lord would make him invincible, like many others before him. Unfortunately, this never happened. By late evening, Dewey's condition had worsened significantly. His family and friends continued to pray, their voices filled with hope and desperation. But despite their efforts and their deep faith, Dewey's body could not withstand the venom's effects. He passed away sometime between 9.30 and 10 p.m., surrounded by those who loved him and shared his beliefs, almost eight hours after the rattlesnake bit him. The Berrien County Sheriff's Office was not called until after Dewey had passed. Sheriff Jerry Brogdon expressed his dismay, noting that one of the hardest things is they had probably 100 people sitting there watching a person die. He added, I don't agree with that, but this is their belief, and I respect that. He died doing what he believed in. Dewey's death was ruled accidental, a tragic yet deeply meaningful example of his faith. In the days that followed, the community mourned his loss, but also celebrated his unwavering devotion to God as they laid him to rest at the New River Holiness Church Cemetery. In the quiet small town of Enigma, Georgia, the New River Holiness Church continued to stand as a house of faith where the congregation gathered to preach the Lord's Word even after Dewey's death. Dewey's last moments still haunt the modest-looking church, and despite his death and many laws against snake handling, people continue to sit bravely facing the poisonous snakes in a dangerous dance duel between faith and death.